What's up guys, it's the Sound Alchemist here with Gersh1 and today we're back at it to answer your questions again for our installment of questioning answering videos called For the Greater Wall. Oh. I, I, I messed that up. <laughs> That's good, I like yeah. it. So if you guys have a question for us about Warhammer 40k or about just anything in life, um, we're here to help. Comment down below, put a question in front of your question. Bradley Krieger said that, or did that, and he, he says, Ariman versus Mephiston, who do you think would win? Now, we have a local Mephiston Ariman expert. You are the, the mediator for these two. So who do you think is going to win? All right, so put it simply, Mephiston is supposedly one of the baddest mofos that knows psychic powers. He bad as well. Mm-hmm. He got skulls on his shoulder pads. He looks like he's already possessed by corn. He drinking blood. And that's right. And he has defeated the Black Rage. I believe not once, but twice. He got sick and he said, no, I'm cured. <laughs> twice. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. And on the other side, we have one of the strongest 30K Marines known as Ariman. Ding, ding, ding. He has acquired knowledge throughout the universe. He has even traveled through time to get certain knowledge and artifacts for his brain power. Smarter than Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> and that ain't that ain't something you guys see every day. Mm -mm. Also, he has been blessed by Zeech, although he doesn't call Zeech his master. Mm -mm. That's right. I'm not going to say anything. Go ahead. <laughs> So uh, looking at it, these two guys are pretty badass, but one of these marines is in fact bestowed by chaos. So I'm gonna give it to Ariman. Right, just because if you look out through history, most of the time, whenever any space marine uh, gets powered by chaos, they, their powers triple, right, quadruple. They just they just get better. Mm -hmm. uh, and and yeah, you're dealing with two two beings that are psychically superior than most other space marines right but one has the advantage of making zinch his side bitch mm -hmm. so true so just because of that just because he has that chaos power i'm giving it to him um, i'd say if they if they both fought 10 times i'd probably say ariman would take it seven out of those 10. yeah i, I would agree because you're our local expert <laughs> in the warp next right. question this one is by leo diaz do you guys think that the rogue traders will be the first to be challenged and removed? Robute Gilliman and the murder of his foster father would be the main reason for this. No. Because if, if he should he would have done that back in the horse heresy. Back during or right after the horse heresy. What was that time period? Oh, like when he was making up the Codex Astartes and all that. Yeah, what is it, the Great Sky Ring? No. No. I don't I don't know what it's called, but it's like some murky time. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it's like you hear about the Horus Heresy and everybody retreating, and then I feel like immediately, immediately after that, it's like Codex Astartes, and then all these Primarchs are still out there, but like the Emperor is already on his throne. So in my opinion, that's always like the gray area of 40k. Yep. I just feel weird whenever whenever I read anything about that. This question comes from Alexander Schneider. If the Tyranid was to come across the solar system with multiple um, habitual planets. Uh, one planet has a large worldwide civilization and another planet or plant. Sorry, sorry. Let me read this all over again. <laughs> oh, you... well, okay, I'm going to read it again see if it makes sense. If the Tyranid was to come across a solar system with multiple habitual planets, one planet has a large worldwide civilization, another plant is completely covered in biomass, uh, would they attack one another? <laughs> well, I thought there was more to it. Well, it says, uh, first or simultaneously. Like, oh, so you're saying you got one Tyranid fleet, one's got a bunch of biomass, and one has a bunch of people. Who would they go to first? Which planet so. would they attack? I think so. I'd feel like if I'm a predator and I'm trying to eat as much biomass, I'd go for the one with the biomass instead of the one with the people. Because people are going to put up a defense. And if I'm a predator, I want my stuff now. Yeah, easy. Yeah, good, 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 good answer. Now, now that I'm all full with biomass, it's like there's one right here. So then I'll go to that one. Right. Next question. This one's by J E three R. Who house is that? Ron's, Ron's house. house. As uh, as rail K 
Chaos Necrons. Is it possible? Do 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 do. Do you think Chaos Necrons are possible? I would say no. No, because they don't have souls to pledge to the Chaos Gods. Right, right. Lisa Hawkridge, when did Gersh One start needing glasses? Since I was fifteen. So like yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's because you were wearing glasses in this video. So Justin Van Volkenberg, he asks, he asked five questions. Um, for the future, if you have five questions, break them up into five <laughs> different comments. Just so we don't get to all of them. Yeah. <laughs> so we're just gonna get to one, and that's gonna be your first one. I used to play Tau when you, f when they first came out. Um, <coughs> I had stopped playing shortly after, but I keep buying the books. Recently, after reading the newer uh, Tau Empire books, the Warzone Damocles, it feels like the original goal of the Tau Empire was replaced and corrupted. In fact, it feels like the Tau have become more like the Imperium. Uh, do you feel this way? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Why? I still feel like the Tau's goals, or at least the Ethereal's goals, the Ethereal's goals, still remain the same, and that is to expand and include more races into their empire. And that's what they're doing. It's just during the Damocles Crusade, they kind of got halted by the Space Marines, so then they had to change their tactics and move to a more militaristic, uh, I guess, way of doing things. But even in the, even in the uh, like the battle for Mugulak Bay and all that stuff, they, they, they did take this Imperial world and they even, what's it called? terraformed it to make it livable for the Tau. So then when the Imperium came back and attacked, then they had to defend one of their planets, which was originally not one of their own. So I still feel like the Ethereal's goals are still the same. Expand and bring in some more units into their army, but it's getting a lot harder because now they're expanding into Space Marine space, um, Tyranid space, and all this stuff. Good answer. It's not. <laughs> Next question. Uh, Aaron Schneider. What does it look like when you shoot a melt gun, grav gun, and the Grey Knight's Psy guns? Uh, you shoot a person with a 45 and it puts a hole in them, but what would these guns do? It puts a hole in them, but it's a hole that starts to deteriorate around it. So, um... A uh, melt gun, it's like getting shot by, like, magma. Like, you know... It'll right, burn, so it'll burn down, yeah, because yeah. it's being pulled by gravity. That's what a gra oh, graviton guns. If you haven't seen it, I feel like it's the guns in Gantz, where it's like you shoot something and like the gravity in that little area just like <clears throat> brings you down and like crushes you. Um, and then the si silencer guns are like the, I feel like the little tiny like invisible bolts that just like fire into you, kill you. Uh, yeah. uh, next question. Do you have one? Mm, great closing music. <laughs> I have a question from General Ryan. Which Imperial Guard Regiment, Space Marine Chapter, and Sister of Battle Group are considered more caring towards the Imperial citizens than any other? Um, and is there an Inquisitor who is considered a bit of a rebel to others? Um, example, like not wanting to execute someone with without proof or corruption. So let me answer the, the difficult one first, the Inquisitor one. Uh, yes, there is a lot of Inquisitors who are seen as um, a bit of rebels to the Inquis Inquisition. Um, those are the people that usually try to deal with uh, Xenos artifacts, who try to delve deeper into the history of um, the Imperium, uh, stuff like that. And, and pretty much any any Inquisitor worth talking about is a bit of a rebel. Uh, now, the first question, Space Marines, you have uh, Salamanders. Right. Imperial uh, Guard Regiment, you have, I think it's the Valhallen. I was going to say Vor Vor Vorstorians. Vorstorians. But I think it is Valhallens. So. Yeah. And then uh, Sisters of Battle Group, I think they're all pretty caring. Mm-hmm. Pretty, pretty nice girls. <laughs> pretty nice group of girls. Next question. Uh, booty juice. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think if I shave my crack, it will help me get chicks? Or is it better to use cash like I'm used to? 
No, use cash. Cause if you if you do the shaving, ooh, you're not gonna be able to. Or you'll you'll be able to walk around, but it's gonna be really unpleasant. <laughs> Trust me. Do not shave down there. Bad idea. Don't do it. David Smolik. What would happen if workers on Hive Worlds found a basic template? So a, 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 a TCF, right? Mm -hmm. Would they be executed by Adeptus Mechanicus or would the Adeptus Mechanicus be like, just let us pick this and you are back on track? Depends. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. That depends a lot. Depends how um, AdMech is feeling, how badly they want something. If there's a lot of resistance there, or it depends on the situation, the place, the time, all that stuff. Yeah, but most of the time it's going to be bad for you. Because mm -hmm. um, like, let's, let's say you do find a, a piece of a standard template construct and you open it and you learn a little bit of, about it. Knowledge is, 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 is bad for you to have in the eyes of the Adeptus Mechanicus. Mm -hmm. Because that is the Omnissiah's information that only the Adeptus Mechanicus should have. The ability to see so they're gonna kill you right um, and I mean you can't really know that it's a template unless you, you, you view it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so Daniel Kelly asks what kind of 40k fanfic stories interest you guys maybe an orc warband that thinks they are space marines no I would would do an interest me <laughs> no I want to see a battle between two Xenos like really fleshed out what they're thinking um, I think orcs against Necrons would be pretty cool yeah that would be really badass um, yeah, for me, anything that deals with orcs being like true orcs, none of, none of that, um, what you said, <laughs> them trying to be space marines. No, like I just want them to be brutal and savage and destructive. That would be cool. Um, that's it, right? Pulp Quirky 26. It has been suggested that snotlings eventually grow up into Gretchen. Is it also powerful that Gretchen eventually grows into orcs? First of all, who's this Gretchen chick you're talking about? <laughs> Why is she becoming an orc? And what's your take on this? No, so the answer is no to both of them. I, I think Snots, Snotling, <laughs> and and um, Gretchen are two different species, and they don't they don't morph. Um, right, because the Gretchen I know is a freaking PhD. Yeah, like she's, she lives, she does a good job. And yeah. snotlings, they're little tiny green things. Yeah, so two, two different things. Mm -hmm. But yeah, no, they don't. Uh, Xenoblade. <laughs> Has 40k affected the way you view religion? Are you more religious, less so, the same as before you played 40k against it or indifferent to it? You know what? Honestly, this is really interesting because, yeah, it affected me some way. Especially when I was reading the lore of the Chaos Gods. And specifically the whole role of, like, the negative aspects of chaos that actually are good. So you have corn, who you see pride, blood, battle. But pride can be good. Um, you could you could have um, you could excel like in in your job, and that desire to to beat your teammates in whatever conflict is is a positive thing. Uh, same thing with Nurgle, with like entropy. Uh, where you're dying, but that hope within you uh, is a lot um, like what you see in, in Christianity. Uh, where, like, yeah, as long as you believe in Jesus, then, um, you know, he, he could take you um, or relieve you of your, your yeah. pains or Save sins. You or, from this uh, state that you're in. Yeah. So this is probably a question that I probably need to think more about, but yes, it, 40K has influenced me, especially when I read up on the Chaos Gods. Heretic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me get my uh, last gun ready over here, just in case. But it just goes to show you, though, that um, religion is a form of mythology. Right. So, yeah. Next question. I have one from Orko Feroz. Who has the best weapon and armor in 40k universe? My bet is Kaldor Drago. It will be more epic if they removed his curse in a book and made him the new leader of the Imperium. Come on, uh, Roboot. 
It's so weak against magic who always needs help of someone. So who has the best uh, power armor? Power armor? Or like, best armor, he says. Weapon and armor. Plot armor is the best. <laughs> Which is Gilman right now. Yeah. Um, Probably the best weapon would be the Emperor's Sword. I can't think of anything else better than that. I would, I would say a shock attack gun. Because it's a mystery. Because not that fire aggression? Yeah. Oh, man, she just keeps getting pulled into 40k. <laughs> Uh, or a lucky stick. Lucky stick is, is my 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 thing. Yeah, definitely gameplay wise, lucky stick is his thing. Mm -hmm. Next question. Uh, Dragon Punch nine hundred three. What is the biggest change so far in Eighth Edition that you guys absolutely hate? Hmm. A change that I hate. I don't really. I mean, I'm liking the direction that it's going. I really like the direction that it's going. Shorter games. Mm -hmm. Better cover or c cover modification, modification, right? Armor modification. Everything's simpler now. Yeah, so it seems like it's pretty good. I guess if I had to complain against against anything, it probably would be the uh, the point system. Like they took away points and they made it into like power power values or something like that. Yeah, I still need to read up on it. I don't 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 know too much on that. Right, and that's that's why I'm saying I don't like <clears> it because I I don't know much about it yet. Mm -hmm. That's 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 the only thing I can think of. So good job, GW. Ryan San Augustine, what do you think will happen to the future of Commander Farsight? Will he wage war against the Ethereals in an attempt to free the Tau from them? It's definitely a possibility, but I think he's need to greatly expand his forces. Because right now, the Tau Empire is huge, and he's only got a little bit of space. Um, also, he doesn't want to just show up in there and start blazing, you know, guns and fighting and whatnot. Because that's going to get a lot of his fellow Tau killed. If anything, it would have to be like a covert mission to kill the Ethereals. And based on what we know so far, uh, Shadow Sun, she's already seeing some of the bad things that, you know, go on behind the scenes. So she might be a key to this, and she's already on the inside. Captain Haydock. Does most feral and feudal worlds have any, some kind, modern imperial defense system? Uh, yeah, feral worlds and feudal worlds, especially feudal worlds, they have, they have modern defense systems. Mm -hmm. um, they have imperial knights. Right. That's... Which is pretty modern. Yeah. Um, but yeah, next question. Vectimus Prime. I watch your videos every day and it got me inspired to come back to 40k. Keep up some game. Keep up the great content. Thank you. How likely is it for a High Lord of Terra to fall to Slanash? They are some of the most powerful and influential humans in the Imperium. Could that hubris lead to taint? Oh yeah, definitely. Oh, I th it happens a lot. I think they are more susceptible than your average Imperial citizen. Mm -hmm. Um because of the whole power money prestige. Right. They're excellent for for Slanesh, or for Zine, well, for all of them, except yeah. for Nurgle. Yeah, I don't really see how Nurgle would, well, unless like they get sick and they're like trying all these other things to cure themselves. And finally, there's no cure, so it's like, Nurgle, if you keep me at my power and keep me alive, you know, I'll give you this world or something like that. Right, but yeah, they're, they're extremely uh, susceptible. Definitely. So much so that like the worst uh, High Lord ever was um, what's his name? Not Thor. Um, During the blood, the reign of blood. Yeah, the reign of blood. Uh, what's his name? I just uh, Goge Van Dyer. Yeah, that guy. He's 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 a punk. He's a dick. <laughs> uh, next question. I have one from Stormo the Brave. Stormo. What would be the most safest and most peaceful place to raise a family in 40k universe? Terra. Yeah, I would say Terra. You're but, not. I mean, they have a gene stealer called there, supposedly. No, they don't. <laughs> no, they don't. You're a gene stealer. Um. Yeah, I would say Terra too, just because I don't feel like you're gonna get hurt from right. the outside world. Uh, I mean, and you, you kind of live in in like a big populated city, which is awesome. So you have tourists. They call them pilgrims. <laughs> Um, you have big, huge metropolises. The entire planet is just one giant hive planet. Right. 
Uh, so it'll, it'll kind of be like an episode of Hey Arnold for your kids. That, that'd be pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, even I was going to say like a Space Marine chapter planet or something like that. But no, because they're going to be, they could come under attack. They're going to be looking at your children for potential recruits and all this and that. So Yeah, you don't want to lose your kids. True. You got to hide your wives, hide your kids. Because they're recruiting everybody out here. And those were the questions for this week. Thank you guys so much for sending those questions our way. If you have more questions, comment down below. That's right. Hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Patreon for more epic 40K content for you guys. And that's all we got for you guys today. Stay tuned for next week for more questions being answered. And as always, I am Sound Alchemist. Gersh1. We are One Mind Syndicate, and we are out of here.